Hi everyone, my name is Jakub and I'm a developer relations engineer at Capturing Reality. This is the fourth and last part of our tutorial series covering drone mapping in a reality capture. In this one, we'll go over exporting our creations and using them in third-party applications like Cloud Compare and QGIS. So let's get to it. In the previous parts, we generated the model, so we also have the dense point cloud. We use the model to create cross sections, the ortho mosaic, and digital elevation models. We use the digital terrain model to create contours and to do some measurements. Now we are going to export everything and also generate some reports. We'll be using the one export from the workflow tab, but it can also be found right here in the file menu. Let's begin. The first will be the textured model in OBJ format. I will click on export and search for OBJ. And I'll pick the dense mesh model with textures in OBJ format. I will be saving everything in my project folder but I will not bother with renaming everything, but at least I will create separate folders for all of the exports. This will be the model. The important settings for surveyors are down here. Export transformation settings. Because we have a georeference project, we have to change the local grid coordinate system to the project output. That's the one we selected in the beginning in the application settings. And click on OK. Next is the dense point cloud in LAS format. So again, let's go to export and search for LAS and pick this LAS point cloud. Now I will create a new folder called point cloud and save the file there. Again, I will keep everything default. Just check the coordinate system and make sure that it is set to project output and click on OK. Next will be the ortho projection. Before the export, we need to select it. In the filter window, we'll search for ortho and click this tile. I'll be exporting it as a TIFF and I'll create a new folder for it and call it OrthoMosaic. The world file is a plain text file used by geographic information systems to georeference raster images. We can choose the coordinate system of the world file. With projected, the model is projected on a selected plane defined via the reconstruction box. This can be useful when making turned elevations. If you are to create a map or a top view, like in our case, select global. Select image when you want to create elevations or sections. In our case, I will use global. Export projection parameters is self-explanatory. It creates an RC ortho file with the parameters. TIFF without compressions are very large, so use compression to make the file size smaller. Big TIFF is being used for projections that have more than 4 GB. So if you are exporting a large projection and you get errors, use this option. Next, we'll export cross-sections in DXF format. Let's search for DXF and let's pick the model cross-sections. Like the model and dense point cloud, we need to change the coordinate system to project output. To export the contours, we need to select the ortho projection and contours. Again, I will search for DXF and pick contours this time. Again, I need to create the folder and save the file right there. We'll export the projection parameters to an RC ortho file. We only have one set of contours, but here we could choose the set if we have more of them. We can also specify the minimal length, and the tooltip will explain that the contours shorter than the minimal length will not be exported. Let's click on OK. Those are all of our exports, and now we are going to generate the reports. We'll export the registration and georeferencing accuracy report, selected ortho projection report, and the map view report. So from the menu, let's pick Registration. Just like the exports, save it somewhere on your drive. The name of the report implies what's going to be in it. We have the calibration groups. If you remember, we grouped all of the images initially and switched the distortion model to brown 4 with tangential 2. We used 6 ground control points, and we also have a graphical representation of the camera positions and their uncertainty. Back in RC, the next report is the selected ortho projection report. We can see the preview of the mosaic, DSM and DTM. Distribution of the ground control points. And we also have our measurements at our disposal and it is also interactive. We can add points and these points are also displayed in the ortho mosaic. The final report is the map view report. This report contains the entire ortho projection with all of its layers. 
that is displayed over a map or a satellite image. We can see the camera positions, the ground control points, and we can change the mosaic to the DSM or the DTM layers. Plus, we can create annotations with these tools right here. Reality Capture can generate more reports, but I show you the ones that are most relevant to surveyors. In addition, you can also modify the existing reports or generate your own. In the help, search for reports and custom report template to learn more. That will be all about Reality Capture, and let's quickly bring our exported results to Cloud Compare and QGIS. Here we are in Cloud Compare, and first, let's import the dense point cloud. Let's click on Open and search for the point cloud. Here, let's keep everything set to the default so we don't lose any information. This window will pop up when you have large values in the coordinates. It is okay because the shift and the scale are stored and during export from CalCompare they will be applied. So let's click on yes. Besides the color, we also have information about the classes. Let's go to colors, switch to scholar field, and change the active scholar field to classification. Let's turn on the shading so we know what we're looking at. Let's go to display, shades and filters, Let's activate EDL shader. Now it looks much nicer. We can see that we have the ground class in yellow and the artificial object class in blue. Here are the two cars. Here's the bulldozer and here's the shack. Let's add the contours. Again, let's click on open and let's pick the contours this time. To make them more visible, we'll disable the dense point cloud and we'll rotate the view like this so we can see that the contours are also in 3D. It's the same with cross sections, so let's quickly add them. And now with all the data imported, you can start working with it inside of Cloud Compare. And the last thing we're going to take a look at is using some of the data in QGIS. In QGIS, we'll first import the ortho mosaic as a raster layer and overlay it with additional layers. To begin, let's open the data source manager and let's add raster. Here I will pick the ortho mosaic from Reality Capture. Now let's check if it has the correct coordinate system. I'll pick the coordinate system with the EPSG code 5514 from the recently used systems and I will confirm it. The mosaic disappeared, but don't worry. I'll fix it by changing the project coordinate system to exactly the same coordinate system. Immediately we can see that the ortho mosaic is back in the viewport. I would also like to add a base map. I will add a web mapping service with the aerial photo mosaic of the Slovak Republic. I'll go to the Data Source Manager, pick Web Mapping Service, connect, and add the layer to my project. I'll drag it under the mosaic from Reality Capture so the mosaic is visible. I want to lower the opacity of the base layer so we can clearly see what is the base map and what is the ortho mosaic from Reality Capture. I'll double click the base map, and under Transparency, I will lower the global opacity to around 50 and click OK. You'll probably don't have the connection to the mapping service, but you can use OpenStreetMap instead. Go to X, Y, and Z tiles and double left click on OpenStreetMap. That will add it to the layer stack. Next, let's add a vector layer containing the contours. Once more, we go to the source manager, pick vector layer, and in the explorer, I will find the DXF file with the contours. Add it to the layers, and close the data source manager. Same as for the mosaic, I'll set the correct coordinate system for the contours layer. Finally, to make them visible, I'll drag them above the ortho mosaic. I don't like the current color of the contours, so I will double click on the layer and bring in the layer properties. In Symbology, I'll pick a new color for the contours. In this case, white will work fine. They will be nicely visible. You can stack additional layers if you have any at your disposal. For example, I'll add another web mapping service containing the cadastral boundaries. I need to connect to the correct service and add the tile sets to the layers. We are at the end of this video and the entire tutorial series. In this one, we exported the results, generated reports, and imported the data to Cloud Compare and QGIS. 
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and learn how to use Reality Capture for drone mapping projects. If you have any thoughts or questions, feel free to add them to the comments.